Good morning, folks. The Arabian Sea has stayed quiet since those crazy four shocks two days ago, but Alaska chimed in with a six-pointer last night. A couple good recommendations today. First, out of Hubble and Spitzer, catching us up on the recent supernova from M82. We're also recommending Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics release on Stellar Nurseries. It was a good read. Today's top story is important. We've talked a lot about exoplanet candidates, but this is the confirmation of those planets in an unprecedented wave. It's of special importance to us here, given the Starwater hypothesis. Remember that the breakthroughs of the last 10 years, when you put them together, suggest that as many as half a trillion watery worlds exist just in our galaxy. Our article is posted for you below, and the full series is the number one watched thing at suspiciousobservers.org by nearly double. Starting weather watch in the East Pacific, where the drought zone is happy to see the arrival of that precip from the low we've eyed for four days now. will be heavy in some spots. Meanwhile, the eastern portion of the country is waiting for the latest stratosphere-driven cooling to go away. Tough story here. The rough winter storms we've reported time after time here have been too much for tens of thousands of seabirds. They've been washing up in droves. Another one of those crossed yesterday, was not as intense as previous storms, but did manage to have some strong isolated effects. Multi-low system persists in the North Atlantic. Yesterday we saw a powerful South Pole storm extend convergence to New Zealand and Australia, dropped at least one tornado and isolated damage as it did so. The convergence continues today all the way to that major storm zone in the north of Australia, lasting still. We're also going to monitor a tropical storm developing in the West Pacific. As you see the rest of the world's storm potential, note that we'll show some new overlays to the world wind map today at the end of the video. Solar wind is calm, so is the KP and electron flux. This will change with two CMEs and two coronal hole streams set to impact Earth in the next few days. First ones expected before the evening news tonight. Solar flaring has calmed considerably. Just one M flare yesterday, but it kept the current radiation storm going at Earth via polar proton bombardment. The sun is peppered with spots, but not all of them are big dogs. Let's start departing where the big sprawler has hit M range twice and now is a watch for more polar radiation surges at the limb. Meanwhile, the incoming groups pose the geo-effective CME threat. We see solid bipolarity in both groups but smaller umbras with no penumbral mixing. The beasts incoming down south are much bigger in terms of umbral core. They have a lot more magnetic power and some delta class. I believe I spot two deltas there. The next coronal hole hit the Earth facing forth of the Sun midday yesterday, but if it looks less dark to your eyes here, that's because there's not a major coronal field opening, more like a cleft in the fields, and the umbral magnetics appear wanting to block that opening too. That's them in orange. Last thing to watch is the big plasma filaments on the disk. They are equally eruptive surface and coronal features to the sunspots. New additions to the current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.